Hey guys, Will here, welcome back to the channel. So today's video we are finally setting up the three BenQ EX3501R monitors on our next level racing triple monitor stand. So, bit of a funny camera angle today. The reason for that is, obviously we're gonna be working a lot in this space today, moving things around, adjusting, and if you've seen my previous video where I gave you a bit of a tour of my sim racing rig setup and my office space in general, you would have seen that obviously a triple monitor setup of this size is not going to fit in the corner where I'm sitting right now. So we're gonna actually have to rotate the rig around. The back of the seat's gonna end up being somewhere around here. I've done some rough measurements to sort of make sure that things will roughly fit in this position. Don't think my wife knows knows exactly what she's going to be expecting when she walks back through the door this afternoon. She's probably going to have an absolute fit and I might have to try and capture that on camera. But hopefully she will remain supportive of the project, we'll see. But ultimately, as you would have seen in my previous video, we are going to be moving into the garage space. We're doing a bit of a renovation on that area to turn it into a bit of a studio. But for now, this is the only space I have to set things up. So there are a couple of things that I'm expecting we're going to run into a bit of trouble with in this video. We're going to obviously have problems with running cables all the way back to my PC in its current position. And I am anticipating that ultimately I'm probably going to need to build a second PC to actually run all this stuff. And I've been saving up to do that for quite some time now, kind of in anticipation or expectation of that happening. But uh, yeah, to get things running initially, we're probably going to have to move things around and do a bit of a jerry-rig setup in terms of the PC. But the aim of today's video is to hopefully get things up and running at least initially. And then we can do a separate video showing the actual configuration and stuff like that. Now, one of the questions that's come up a lot so far in this video series, this little mini series is how exactly I'm intending to run triple monitors with some of the Codemaster titles that I know don't support triple monitor setups in their true sense of, you know, actually having a distorted perspective as you actually wrap the screen around yourself. They sort of, they're more configured for a triple monitor screen setup where they're just sort of sitting in front of you rather than wrapping around you. So we're going to be tackling that in a future video as well. But yeah, the aim of this video is to basically get things set up from a hardware perspective and then we'll move on from there in future videos. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the setup. First thing we're going to do is take the Samsung 55 inch panel off the stand, move things around and then we'll get started on installing these monitors. I'll also be showing you my solution for mounting these BenQ monitors onto a VESA mount as well. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so this is something that a lot of people have been questioning with BenQ monitors in particular. So we're going to be removing the factory stand here using the one, two, three, four screws that are behind the cover that you just saw me remove. We're actually going to be replacing that with a vase mount from BenQ themselves. Now I know you might be seeing that and thinking, how the hell did you get one of those? Uh, because BenQ supplied these monitors, I did speak with them about the vase mount and they actually managed to track down for me what they said was the very last remaining one in the entire world. Apparently the factory that was manufacturing these went out of business but they have supplied a CAD file that allows you to 3D print your own. Now, I'm not gonna endorse this. I printed these with a mate who happened to have a high quality 3D printer that he could do for me. Now, I don't know whether they're gonna be strong enough to mount the monitors, but there is a CAD file so you can print them yourself. I use PLA with 80% infill because I had a few issues with 100% infill and shrinkage. You could also go to a fabricator and have something made out of metal as well, but I'll make the link available to the CAD file for the design for this as well as a 3D print file as well, which I found on Thingiverse for this guy as well. So there are solutions that are out there, and as you'll see in the next couple of steps, it's pretty straightforward to mount. So you might be wondering how I'm actually gonna mount this to my next level racing stand. So what I've done is I've taken two of the mounts that actually come with the stand, and then I've installed a couple of these little brackets, which I just got from the local hardware store for a couple of bucks each, and there, the part number is VBM1060, but obviously that'll depend on where you are in the world, but it's just a 60 by 200 by one millimeter mounting plate or a bracket or whatever you want to call it there, depending on where you are in the world. Now, the really useful thing about this bracket in particular is that the stock mounting plate has a hundred millimeter spacing between the two screw holes. And there's also a hundred mil spacing on this as well. So you can go from there to there, from there to there and so forth. So it actually lines up absolutely perfectly, which makes it very, very simple and cheap and straightforward to mount. So we'll go ahead and get started on that now. So the first thing we want to do is undo the four screws. 
Now I'm doing this without actually having tested this monitor. I'm gonna assume that it's gonna work out of the box. So it makes sense to do this while it's still in the box simply because you don't wanna do any damage to the panel. And while it's sitting in the box, it's nice and secured. But obviously if you wanna test the monitor beforehand, then you probably might want to do that before you get started on this step. But I'm going to trust BenQ in this case. The other two that I've already unboxed have been perfectly fine. So I'm going to assume that this one's going to be okay as well. So we'll undo these four screws. Magnetic screwdriver goes a long way as well. Very, very helpful. Last one. Just support it as well so it doesn't flop. And then we just lift it up slide it out very very straightforward and you can see there the mounting plate that's on that part is exactly the same as this part so we simply replace that one with that one put the four screws back in place and we should be good to go easy and the four screws might be a little bit tricky if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver I definitely recommend magnetizing your screwdriver beforehand if you can but we're going to drop through the hole there now there are actually six holes but only four screws in place on the original factory mount so we're just going to go with the same four screws i'm not going to bother sourcing an additional two screws because i don't think that this is going to be a weak point by any means i think it's going to be perfectly fine but if you are pedantic about this kind of thing you can install an extra two screws and that won't be a problem okay and now that is the top half so it hooks onto the stand on that side so we want to go from here and we do have a bit of adjustability here as well. I want to make it relatively low on the stand. So it's a little bit of a pain because I can't get up there, but what we'll do is we'll just mount it on this position for now. We can always move things around later on if we need to. And I'm expecting that there's going to be a bit of adjustment that's going to be required compared to my 55 inch screen that I was using previously. We'll just install these here for now. Just being very careful not to cross thread them, obviously. the way it should, then um, this should mount pretty easily on top of the Next Level Racing stand. So let's get that done now. Okay, so in front of me I have the Next Level Racing freestanding triple monitor stand. And as you can see, I don't have the side pieces connected at the moment for the second and third monitors. There's a very good reason for that. So what I want to do is test fit the new BenQ monitor on this first. Make sure that my height is adjusted correctly before I install these side pieces, simply because once you've got those side pieces installed, it becomes very difficult to adjust the height and things like that from that point forward. So we're gonna do a test fit, make sure everything fits correctly, put the BenQ monitor on here, slide it in front of our rig to make sure that I'm happy with how it sits, make any adjustments that we need to make, and then we can go ahead and install the side pieces. So let's jump in and do that quickly now. I'll grab the BenQ monitor. And you can see here, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to hold for the camera at the same time, but you've got the little mounting bars here it simply slots into position. I showed you this in my review of the Next Level Racing monitor stand, so you can check that out in more detail in that video. I will also show you from another angle later in this video as well. But we simply slot it into position, it kind of just hooks on there. Very, very simple, and you can see once it's on there, it's very solid. It's moving around a little bit at the moment simply because it's on soft carpet, but once we screw those supporting brackets into place, it does not move on that stand whatsoever. And we'll just slide it across a little bit, tighten it down, and then I'm gonna move it across to the side bring my rig forward and slide it into position so that I can just test the height. Now I'm assuming that I'm gonna to have to end up moving this down a little bit, but we'll see very shortly. All right, so sitting in position here, it's just very, very different from what I'm used to, but we'll quickly prop this up here so we can see the actual screen's dimensions here. So sitting there, it's blocking the bottom portion of the screen. Now, now I'm kind of used to looking down at the wheels down here, which means I would need to drop the screen down a little bit lower than this to be comfortable with that view. But I also don't want to sacrifice the, um, I don't want to sacrifice hiding too much of the screen behind this either, because obviously we don't want to lose that perspective. But we're going to be running our field of, field of view a lot tighter than we've previously been doing as well. So I think there's probably going to be a little bit of toing and froing, making adjustments and fine tuning. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down one notch just to make it a little bit lower, and then we'll, we'll sort of go from there. But I think this is probably going to be pretty good starting point just need it one click lower so that when i'm looking down at the wheels i'm not kind of looking up at the screen i kind of want to be looking at the bottom of the screen about here i think but i think yeah i'm probably going to end up fine tuning it once we're all set up and going but for now i think that's probably what i'm going to do so we'll take the screen back off 
We'll make a few adjustments and then we'll go back in, install the side parts and we should be good to go. So we just run into our first little snag with this project. Now it's not a problem by any means, but it's just something that I want to point out to you guys so that you're aware. So if we remove these parts, which I originally intended to do, I've discovered that on the side pieces, the mounting bracket for the side monitors can't actually slide over the top. So it obviously fits over the narrow piece, but it can't fit over these pieces, which is obviously a big problem. So what we're going to have to do instead is leave this in place, leave it in the exact position that it's in currently, knowing that it's already on the lowest position. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just adjust the vase amount on the back of the monitor. We've got a huge scope of adjustment there. So we'll just adjust it to be lower on that instead of on here. So not a problem by any means, but just something that I want you to be aware of before we progress any further. So the next thing we're going to do now is remove the four bolts on either side here to install the side brackets. And I'll show you those in just a moment as I'm doing it. But that's basically going to slide on either side, then we'll mount these parts, then we're ready to mount our monitors. All right, so now we need to actually measure the distances that we're gonna to need to each center. So obviously the center of the first screen is gonna be here. But we're gonna to need to adjust these rails on these little bolts here. So we need to leave these a little bit loose for now, just so that we can move things around and then sort of precariously, but very carefully place the monitors on the individual stands, move everything around so that we're happy with the position and then tighten everything down at the end. So the next thing we need to do now is install the vase mounts on the remaining two monitors and then we can get everything mounted up on the stand. We're getting pretty close now. So before we install the mount on the back of the monitor here, I've got some M4 screws which I've put through the mount here. So I've bored out the holes just a little bit or drilled out the holes just a little bit to four millimeters to match the M4 screws. And those have cut a nice clean thread there as I've screwed them through. So what that means is that I won't have to get a screwdriver on the backside. When I tighten the nut there, it will clamp down quite nicely on those mounts. Because obviously, once this is mounted on the screen like that, you're not gonna be able to get in behind there and um, get a screwdriver in there to do those up. So those should fit nicely. And then obviously we mount our brackets onto there. So the next step now is to screw that onto the TV. Now the thickness of the 3D print is a little bit thicker than the, uh, than the official mount. So I'm hoping that these screws will be long enough to still bite in. Obviously we want to make sure they're not too long. That's not going to be the case with it being thicker, but we'll screw those in. If you are using longer screws for some reason, just make absolutely sure that you don't damage your panel by screwing through and into the actual panel itself. There's not a whole lot of leeway there. So just make sure you check your manual, but using the same length screws that were in the original mount and the fact that the vase amount is thicker means that we don't have any risk of that happening as long as we don't crush the 3D print. So we'll screw those in. Yep, no problems at all, and then we can mount our brackets on. And we'll obviously tighten these up with a spanner before we actually mount it onto the TV, but for now, that will do. Right, so we'll line this up in the same position as we did on the other screen. clearance there for the bolt which is another thing I was a little bit worried about but it looks like it's okay otherwise we might need to put the screw through the other direction but that's okay. So I've adjusted this into pretty much what I think is about the right position and I'm just going to balance this on here now. Now I haven't got the bolts done up in the brackets yet, so I do need to be very, very, very careful here. But we'll just get that on there and then slide it across this position. It looks like I've guessed this pretty, pretty closely. So, put that there. And we'll slide that across on there. And I think that's about right. The curvature 
It's a little bit steeper than natural, but once the once the rig's actually in there, I'll line everything up and have a look in a moment. But that looks like it's going to be pretty good. So I just need to tighten up the two. We'll install the two bolts on the back here now to hold that in position. And we can move the mount around, or the base mount around on the actual stand there to make any further fine tuning adjustments. But that looks pretty close to what I think I'm going to need it. So I'm going to tighten all that up now. I don't really need to show that on camera, I don't think, because it's just two bolts. And then we're going to replicate everything again on this side. And then we're ready to plug everything in and see if it works. Okay, so time to mount the final screen. Now I don't have the protective layer on this one because this is the one that I've been using on my desktop for the last couple of weeks just as a test out and to do the review and everything as well. So slide that one into position as well. Okay, so now it is time to peel off the protective layer. All right, so we're close to the finish line now. I just need to connect the power and display port cables. So I'm probably gonna have to use an HDMI cable too here, simply because I don't have enough display port cables that will reach my machine. So it's gonna be a little bit of a crude setup just for this video to get things running. We'll figure out, we'll do a bit of a stock take on exactly what we need to get it all up and running properly. And then in the next video, we can go through all the configuration and setup and everything like that. But we'll at least get them powered up and get them functioning so you can see what it's gonna look like in this video. And we'll go from there. So I'm gonna duck down now and get all the power our cables connected. Okay, so it's the moment of truth now. We're gonna power up the displays and see what happens. Hopefully there's no smoke, but this one's connected with a display port cable. The other two are both connected with HDMI cables, simply because I didn't have suitable cables to reach back to my PC. So it's a bit of a jerry rig solution for now, but at least we'll be able to see if everything works. So let's power them on. One, two, and three. Well, they all power up, that's a good sign. <laughs> oh, we got one, two, Three. Nice. Okay, so I'm just quickly gonna set all three screens to the sRGB color profile, just to make sure we don't have any discrepancies between the different screens. Obviously, we'll be doing some fine tuning to brightness and things like that later on. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and change it all to the same settings so we know that we're comparing apples and apples. Okay, that is done. So now we can push the rig back into place and test everything out. So what I've done here is a really crude setup in F1 2018. I haven't gone through all the settings properly and configured things. I've just done a surround mode configuration quickly in the NVIDIA control panel. And obviously we'll show you how to do that properly once I've figured it out myself. This is all a learning experience for me as well here. So I've got a very crude setup at the moment, just so it works, just so I can show you something in this video. So you'll get to see doing a lap around here in this configuration. Now I haven't driven this at all yet. All I've done is a quick benchmark mode just to make sure everything's working properly. Now I found that with the current configuration, I'm getting around sort of 40 to 60 frames a second with the graphics turned all the way down. So definitely gonna need to do some upgrades to the PC to run this moving forward and to take full advantage of these monitors at 100 Hertz. But I was expecting that anyway. So that's a little, that's something a little bit exciting for the channel. We'll um, be able to look forward to building another PC hopefully. So all we'll do now is jump in and do a couple of laps so you can see exactly what it looks like from my perspective. Now I haven't actually done any driving myself yet. All I've done is just a benchmark mode run just to see what things look like and what the frame rate was like and obviously adjusted the camera and stuff as well. So I'll go into all the details of camera adjustment. We'll actually use a proper field of view calculator to get everything set up correctly later on. But for now, I just want to do a couple of laps to give you an idea of what this looks like in what I think will ultimately end up being similar to my field of view that I end up using day to day. So, oh, it's so weird being so close to the steering wheel here. It's... <laughs> But, oh man, it's so cool. Like it's, it's funny because the sense of speed in a straight line isn't as great as what you have with the large monitor because the, the things sweeping past you in the distance, sort of all on the sides, aren't directly in front of you. Because it's, so it's a much more realistic field of view. Obviously, that was expected, but it's just so much to take in at the moment. Like obviously, I'm really slow, but that's just because I got lots of getting used to, to getting used to this system to do. But. It's just so much more realistic in terms of the field of view and actually having to turn my head now to look at the mirrors instead of just glancing. Now, obviously the mirrors look a little bit distorted 
because this isn't, you know, compensating for the screens coming closer to me. So it is sort of stretching on the sides, and that was expected with this game because it doesn't properly support three monitors. But what I wanted to achieve here was basically just testing to see, you know, what it looked like and whether it was actually even playable because I really had no idea. I don't know of anybody else that's tried such a crazy multiple screen setup for this game. So I can definitely say, I mean, my driving's terrible right now because I'm not really concentrating on what I'm doing, but I can definitely say that this is way more realistic in terms of the field of view than what I had before with the um, with the big 55 inch screen and I'm really looking forward to spending some time with this getting used to it. One thing that's really striking me straight away here is that because the um, because the screens are a little bit wider than what most people run for triple monitor setups I'm able to look at the apex and a lot of the time the and I'll just stop quickly here so I can explain this a bit better but a lot of the time the seam in the screen or the the bezel of the screen ends up being here. So say on like a 20, 27 inch screen or something like that, the bezel would be here, which is right where the apex of the turn is. So as we approach the apex, we'll just come quickly come around here. So you'd be spotting your apex and you'd actually be looking at a crease in the screen as you do it. But because these are 35 inch, it pushes it out beyond that. And even with a realistic field of view here, the seam of the screen is not where you would normally be looking. So you're never actually going to be looking over here specifically to spot your apex or anything like that. So you don't really notice the seam as much as I'd imagine you would on a 27 inch screen. Now this is the first triple monitor screen that I've ever really used so I don't really have a whole lot to compare it to but I'm definitely very very impressed with the fact that you know I can look at the middle screen here and it, it doesn't quite give me that crazy sense of speed that I had previously which should make driving a little bit easier but I can still turn my head and get that sense of things coming past me and it really does feel like I'm sitting inside a cockpit with the side pods next to me I might end up adjusting the pitch of the screens a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with how this sits now. And just having to turn my head to look in the mirrors, it's such an immersive experience. So what I'll do is I'll leave it at that for now. Obviously this has given you an idea of what it roughly looks like. In the next couple of videos, we'll dig into this a lot more deeply, show you some other titles as well. I'm keen to look at Dirt Rally 2, as well as Assetto Corsa as well. I actually haven't played Assetto Corsa at all with any of this setup. So I think that's something that's important to do because that's a game that a lot of people will play with setups similar to this. So I definitely want to check that out as well. Uh, now another thing that I am going to be doing is building a bit of a hood over the top here. Just say um, sort of like a black cover that will sit over the entire top here to really sort of give me that tunnel vision so I don't have stuff going on around the outside. I'll probably also drape some sort of a curtain underneath as well. So we've got that to look forward to as well. That's going to be a bit of a project. But look guys, hopefully you found this video interesting and useful. If you have, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss the next video. We've got a lot of stuff still to come with setting up this rig and I've got a lot of stuff to learn and then share with you guys. Obviously the next video from here will be configuring all the software side of things, getting the surround setup working working with display ports, making sure our resolution is correct and adjusting our field of view and stuff like that. So stick around for that one. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.